Right, I wanted to talk about health and health monitoring, uh, blood tests, that sort of thing. Um, now, over recent years, as a user community, we've become much, much more aware of the risks involved with usage. Uh, and generally, as a community, even though we often don't like to admit it, we have come to accept that these drugs do cause problems. The biggest issue, or the most common health problem for a user, is shutdown, permanent shutdown. Um, it's something that within the user community we tend to normalise. It's sort of it happens. It's just one of them things, which is fine. I mean, that's fair enough. But uh, you also have to accept that when you speak to someone who's medically trained, or you speak to somebody outside of the community, when you explain to them that you have permanently destroyed your ability to naturally produce hormones because of your drug use, that actually is quite a severe medical condition. And you can't be surprised when they find that quite surprising. So uh, don't play it for anything than it is. We accept it in the community as part of the, the things that happen because we're users. But outside of our community, that is still regarded as quite a severe medical condition. And as a result, it's going to be treated as such. So don't get shocked when people react quite adversely to the knowledge that that's what you've done to yourself. Beyond that then, the probably single biggest health risk or problem that you see occurring is cardiac related, heart related. And in this is where there's a bit of a problem because the blood tests that we do don't really give us a reflection on heart health as well as they should. They'll show us environments being created that are damaging to the heart, so high RBC, um, and poor cholesterol ratio, so low HDL, high LDL. And they will show that there is damage done to the heart. Um, but they don't give us a real direct indication. Now CK is also a good marker of heart inflammation or heart damage, but CK also shows muscle tissue damage and it also shows liver damage and it also shows brain. So it's inflammation markers and, and there's three types of CK that release in the bloodstream from various areas in the body and the test that we get does not separate, it's all grouped together. So you don't know. Now if your CK is just out of range and you've just trained the day before, chances are it's because you've just trained. But if your CK is 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, that's high. That's high even for someone who's just trained and you really need to take two, three days of training and repeat the test to make sure there's not an underlying factor. But what we see all the time online is, here are my bloods, what do you think? My CK is two and a half thousand, that's normal, that's because you're a bodybuilder, that's because you've got shit loads of muscle, that's because you've just trained. But the guy's 160 pound, he hasn't got loads of muscle. So you, you need to, to be very wary that, you know, moderately elevated CK can be dismissive of, particularly this liver information there as well, because that will trigger high CK. But when you start going over the 1,000, over 1,500, then you start to need to be considering of redoing that test with the training removed so it's not a factor in, in, in affecting that test and get a more accurate look at what's going on there high blood pressure or high RBC, thicker blood, is going to put the heart under more strain. <coughs> and then we've got cholesterol issues. Now, any adverse time period of time with, with poor low HDL or, or and high LDL or just low HDL on its own, is going to increase the, the uh, potential for plaque buildup on the arterial walls. It doesn't matter how clean your diet is, that's still going to increase that risk. As a result of that, your, your arterial pathways will narrow. You've got thicker blood running through. You've got narrow arterial pathway. That's going to create a, an increasing pressure in that area. You're also then going to start seeing thickening of the heart wall. And, and anab anabolics reduce heart wall flexibility as well. But that's not going to be shown on the blood test. So what you're seeing is symptoms that can cause heart problems. But what you're not seeing is whether they have. Now one of the very, very common conditions within bodybuilding for the heart is heart failure. And that doesn't mean your heart fails, as in stops. What it means is that your heart is not beating correctly. The, the 
beat is too shallow so it, it's just a bit of a pathetic pump rather than a hard strong solid pump um, and as a result you're at risk so if you want to test for heart failure you need to do a BMP test it's a blood test but you need to test for BMP that will indicate whether you've got markers for heart failure and, and really what you want to be doing is not just relying on blood tests but you want to do specific heart health checks so I'd look at getting an echo or, or, or an ultrasound or something of that nature or a trace just so you can see how your heart's behaving arterial fibrillation irregular heartbeats are common in users as well and they can cause major major issues so these are areas where we need to be looking at and not just looking at a set of bloods and then discounting the results because we're bodybuilders it's a bit pointless doing the results in the first place if you're not going to bother acting on what you find cholesterol management incredibly important management of red blood cells incredibly important and specifically checking heart health is also important because of all the problems I see the biggest single factor I see affecting bodybuilders after permanent shutdown is heart what well, we in end of May beginning of June so six months six months in or well, five months gone uh, and I uh, 40 50 users with heart problems heart attacks I don't think there's been I think there's been three or four fatalities in that group but the rest have, have just been heart issues that they're now having to manage so uh, definitely worth it for thought when it comes to managing your health keeping an eye on that and just making sure that you don't discount those bloods as is typical for bodybuilders because if they are abhorrent they need looking at and if there are causes that cause those high levels you need to try and remove those causes and retest just to make sure there's nothing underlying going on okay so there you go um, don't just rely on bloods, get your heart health specifically checked. And by the way, and this is coming from me, the cardio hater of the world, cardio is gonna be your best ally when it comes to heart health. But I'm not talking about a brisk walk around the fields in the morning with a dog. I'm talking about hard cardio, hit, sprints, hill sprints, cycle sprints, real proper conditioning work that's going to improve your heart health wandering around the field will have an impact but it's not going to be anywhere near as effective as doing conditioning cardio so it is well worth adding that into your routines in order to maintain heart health it's something i never did and it's one of the areas i neglected and i paid the price because of that obviously my drug use and my size are big influence factors as well but i should have paid more attention to my cardio um, it is one of the areas that i neglected quite badly so remember cardio is going to help your heart probably more than anything right on that note i'm going to get off take care guys and i'll speak to you soon